Yo, what's going on guys? Been meaning to update you guys on the Turbo YZ. I have not forgot about this project. Um, I actually got quite an update for you guys. Um, you do got to bear with me because a lot of the stuff that I'm running is not off the shelf. I'm having a quite, a, quite a bit of custom work done. Um, so you can see I got a bunch of parts in front of me. Uh, this thing is really starting to come together with getting all the parts that I need to get it back together and boost this thing even more because for the people that are just tuning in this bike does make 100 plus horsepower <laughs> and i have put i want to say like 24 25 pounds of boost through this thing um towards the end of the season i was just you know saying what the hell and just basically throwing everything at it um i did bump my head quite a bit to get the tune where it landed at the end of the season so it was definitely a learning curve getting this thing to the point that it was before you know i took it apart and did the winter refresh obviously um while doing the refresh i did take it upon myself to upgrade quite a few things there were some oversights that you know that got missed when i put it together and made the type of horsepower that i did on it which is 100 plus um I guess I do want to state that the 105 horsepower that this thing did make on the dyno, um, that actually was at a lower boost than what I was actually running on the street uh, prior to the actual teardown. Um, so on 15, I want to say like 15, 16 pounds, this thing put down 105 horsepower to the rear tire. Um, and then, like I said, end of the season, I was running 24, 25 PSI, have multiple logs to pull it up. I mean, if I really wanted to be a little anal about it, I probably could calculate the horsepower to the wheel based off my fuel flow calculations. Haven't had a chance to actually do that yet, but I don't know. Maybe it's something that I'll actually entertain. So you can see what I got in front of me here. Um, I got both cases over here. These actually do have the old bearings in them. Yeah, I probably could have got away with uh, running these bearings again, but I have. This has just been sitting in my basement for a while, so I don't want a chance, uh, you know, if any debris got in them. So cheap insurance to just change out the bearings. You can kind of see here, I do have a brand new set of bearings. These are all OEM Yamaha. Highly recommend going with the OEM Yamaha bearings. They're just proven. This is just one thing where the reliability is there and you really don't got to worry about, you know, um, you don't really got to worry about this. So I try to stick with the OEM stuff as much as possible. I did entertain the thought of going to a ceramic style bearing, but honestly, it was just way out of my budget. Just on bearings alone, it was almost like a thousand dollars to switch to ceramic. And I, I highly doubt that. I, I don't want to say there won't be a difference, but, or there wouldn't be a difference, but I just, yeah, I'm going to just stick with the OEM ones for now, unless, um, <laughs> unless someone wants to partner <laughs> but anyways um so after this video i'm actually about to go get uh, a couple cans of brake clean get these cases all cleaned up i might even paint them i don't know who knows um but bearings are getting popped out um i usually just do that with a torch i you know heat up the bore a little bit and they usually pop straight out um and then you know as far as assembly Put the bearings in the freezer heat up the bore a little bit you got to move fast though um and then just pop the bearings in they should just fall in you do not need to beat on these with hammers that is a <laughs> this isn't a house and you aren't bob the builder do not beat on the cases with a hammer or you will you might have a bad day ahead of you um <laughs> so got the bearings that's all good to go um i do want to take the time to shout out cryo heat these guys are some lifesavers um so obviously you can see my transmission right here um i think i put this back together right i tried to use the parts diagrams as a you know a guide to put them back together but um i'll probably double check everything once again before i actually put it in the cases but um do want to shout out cryo heat um those guys they they did quite a bit of work for me on this transmission uh you can see how shiny this freaking transmission is like the video really doesn't do it justice like look at that first gear right there this thing is like literally like i can see my reflection in it it's pretty crazy um and then obviously this gear set right here 
I also want to shout out Joe's ATV performance. Um, so it was kind of, uh, those two companies worked in conjunction with each other to get me what you're looking at now. So um, Cryo Heat, they basically polished or micro polished the trans for me. And they also cryo forged all the gears, shafts, basically the entire transmission assembly. And, um, and then Joe's ATV, they actually back cut the gears for me. So you can kind of see those fresh machine marks right there. So should be able to throw quite a bit of power at this thing this year. Kind of see right there. Yeah, right there, right in the middle. But uh, yeah, trans looks absolutely beautiful. Couldn't be happier. Everything is nice, smooth, and polished. And yeah, it makes a big difference. It makes a very big difference. Uh, you see, I got the actual shift forks right here. These were also cryoed and polished. Everything is nice and shiny. Um, obviously, you guys know I'm switching to a Carrillo piston. This is a 102 millimeter piston. So the stock bore on these bikes is actually a 97 millimeter. Um, so, you know, increasing it five millimeters, that's that's pretty substantial. So it's it's actually substantial enough for me to jump from 450 cc to an even 500 cc. Um, and then also, you, people are probably gonna beat up on me on this, but um, I'm actually raising the compression even higher. You can't see it because the line to line coating is right there, but compression on this new piston is actually 14.3 to one. So I love my boost. I love my compression. They play very well together as long as you tune it good and you run good fuel. As long as you tune it good and as long as you run good fuel. Let me say that one more time because people, they, <laughs> it's a bit of a head scratcher when I tell them how much compression I'm actually running and how much boost I actually put through this thing. Cause like even last year with my 450 cc stock bore setup, I was running 13.8 to one compression and I was putting literally like 24 pounds of boost in this thing. And as the tuners say, plug never lies. Um, you know, that is, uh, that's really true because when I, you know, when I tore this thing down, gave the plug and everything a once over, and even through all my tuning woes, I never once saw any signs of like detonation or pre-ignition on the plug tip. Everything looks super happy. I do run my bike a little bit richer, um, you know, just to keep things a little bit happier to a certain degree. But um, yeah, even the, the IATs and everything on this thing looked absolutely perfect. Like, um, so I think I could probably push this turbo quite a bit more. And that's actually what I plan to do this year because went to PRI this year and I saw a few different um, turbo manufacturers that had pretty good candidates that would you know fit in this place really well so before i do that i want to make everything i want to make all of my changes based off data so and based off the current data that i have i can actually push that turbo quite a bit further and this is a garrett gbc turbo for those that are interested uh because i know a lot of people ask me that on my instagram and stuff so it is a garrett gbc turbo I've had pretty good luck with it so far, so shout out to Garrett. Um, seems to be a really good product. Um, and then also, so you guys, I think my last video, I did show the crank, and I just kind of put this in here just to hold it in place so it's not rolling around all over the place. But um, the crank, I did get uh, refurbished by cr by um, Crankworks. Shout out to Pouty over there. Uh, so I got a new rod. This is one of their billet rods. This is what I ran with my last setup. And then this is that Carrillo piston right here. Um, and another thing that I did that will be something new going forward that I'll probably do on all my pistons, you know, on all my future refreshes um, is this line to line coating. So you can actually see this like matte black coating that are that's on the skirts on the pistons. So this coat coating is uh, is actually a patented coating by line to line, um, and it has a really good reputation. I know a lot of guys personally that run this. Some people even run this in their like 3,000, 4,000 horsepower. Um, I do know Steve Morris. He just dropped a video not too long ago. Um, he's running the same coating on the pistons in his like 5,000 horsepower um, <laughs> Buick wagon. Um, but yeah, so this coating is really good. Really, really good. I highly recommend this. I could see this being a very beneficial, um, uh, a beneficial thing, especially like a 
dirt bike like a high strong engine like this so um yeah i'm excited to try it and yeah i just think i should have some pretty good luck with it but um yeah so and then obviously you guys know i am transitioning to a uh this is like a full copper gasket so last year i had sort of a hybrid setup that i had pretty good luck with it was a mixture of a o-ring slash mls gasket well, this time I'll actually have the actual cylinder head top field hooped and I'll run a full copper gasket. This gasket I did get custom made by Flat Out Gaskets and I believe they're in Illinois. But you basically just send them whatever you want in copper uh, gasket wise and they can make it for you. They can make it any thickness. They can um, they, they actually offer two different styles, too. So. Uh, this is something that's actually really cool, especially for the people that are, you know, making high horsepower with uh, water jacketed engines or, you know, engines that you still drive on the street while making big horsepower. Um, but they actually offer a copperhead gasket like the one that I have here, and they actually coat them in like silicone. So this actually answers a lot of the or this alleviates a lot of the issues that you would typically have if you run a copper head gasket and you know some people they complain about the copper head gaskets seeping a little bit like coolant wise but um this kind of alleviates that because you know you just got to do like two heat cycles so you basically you know slam everything together get everything torqued to spec warm the engine up for a while cool everything off and then do a retorque procedure and uh yeah it's, it's pretty straightforward so highly recommend flat out gaskets uh this will be my first year running their stuff but i've had a pretty good experience with them thus far so so the only thing i'm waiting for now because i know you guys are wondering where's the cylinder head so cylinder head is actually at racer's edge right now uh, i got a buddy brett he's actually taking care of the cylinder heads for me right now um actually in talks with uh victory valve right now because i'm doing a custom set of titanium valves haven't decided if they're going to be um you know oversized valves i'll probably stick with the stock diameter um you know just so i can get parts faster because i do want to start making <laughs> videos again and that's one less of a custom part that i need if i just have everything built to stock specifications so i'm just waiting on the cylinder head now um, but in the meantime, I am going to slap together this short block. Um, so nothing stopping me from actually getting the trance in, getting the crank in, getting the cases all torqued up, etc. So, uh, today I'm going to clean these cases up. Um, you know, obviously get everything squeaky clean, get the new bearings in. And then, um, yeah, I might actually try to get everything torqued up and install it today. So, uh, I just wanted to give you guys an impromptu, um, <laughs> update because i didn't really feel like waiting for the cylinder head to get here because a lot of people keep blowing my dm up asking me what is the status of the bike so no i have for not no i have not forgot about the bike no i have not forgot about the ground build um for those that only know me because of the bike i do have a pretty serious like 5,000 horsepower hemi truck build that i'm doing it's basically a drag week sick week truck and some of those parts that i needed were pretty time sensitive so you know i kind of had to put this stuff on the back burner a little bit and then obviously i was waiting on parts and whatnot but um but yeah so everything is in motion i just wanted to give you guys an update um if you haven't already please subscribe to the youtube please like comment share and subscribe i definitely appreciate it and it definitely helps me with getting more awareness to you know Show them what people said was impossible. So <laughs> um, I tend to do like the little crazy stuff. It's, I guess you could call it niche in nature, but uh, but yeah, this bike, I'm, I'm literally shooting for like 160 horsepower this year on a single cylinder. And yes, I'm dead serious when I say that. So, um, but yeah, um, just stay on the lookout. This thing, I'm actually planning to have it back together before the end of this month. So um should be back to you know riding vlogs again pretty soon so still got to do little stuff like send my injectors out and get them you know um cleaned and flow tested just to make sure we're starting off on a clean slate but for the most part um uh, pretty much there got a bulk of the parts right here as you can see so uh once again please like comment and subscribe and i uh, definitely appreciate everybody that has been keeping in tune with the builds and uh 
yeah this should be a fun year hopefully i can have all three projects out this year so until next time uh peace and ride safe